How do you know that the information provided in a nutrition book is based on scientific evidence? Do you go by reviews on Amazon or by the academic credentials of the author? Or do you just trust that the book must be based on evidence if the author cites scientific publications? Here's a little spoiler for you. None of these methods are suitable to find out if a nutrition book is any good. Instead, I suggest that you check out a website run by a nonprofit organization called Red Pen Reviews that provides comprehensive, unbiased reviews of nutrition books for free. Let me tell you more about it in this video. Hello everyone, I'm Mario. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanted to tell you about an organization I'm involved with called Red Pen Reviews that I think will be of great interest to you. You can find it online at www.redpenreviews.org. Red Pen Reviews is a non-profit organization that was founded a few years ago by my friend and colleague, Dr. Stefan Guiené. Its objective is to elevate the quality of health information in nutrition books, and specifically to make public to which degree a given nutrition book is based on scientific evidence. In the long run, we hope to also put some pressure on the publishing industry to develop stricter standards for nutrition books. Currently, there are seemingly no such standards, and as a result, most diet and nutrition books on the market do not provide high-quality information. You see, what we're hoping for when we read a diet or nutrition book is that the author has reviewed the entire scientific evidence on a given topic, and then provides us with a condensed but balanced version representing this totality of the evidence in the book. Sadly, this is rarely the case, even in books that come across as scientific, with lots of cited references, or that have been authored by a doctor or scientist. Quite often, references cited in support of specific claims have little or nothing to do with the claim made, or the strength of the evidence is substantially overstated. For example, it is not uncommon that an author links a specific food or food component to a disease with a strong statement such as, food X causes disease Y. You know, as in, red meat causes colon cancer, or honey cures COVID. But then when you look at the cited reference, it's an observational study showing an association, or even just an animal or cell culture study. This is highly problematic because to you, the reader, the citation of a scientific publication gives the impression that a statement is based on actual scientific evidence. Another misuse of science that I often see is that authors would just talk about a certain aspect that fits their narrative, but not share other pertinent pieces of information around a given topic. You know, say a vegan book talking endlessly about the amazing nutrient density of vegetables or the fiber and protein content of legumes without ever mentioning the anti-nutrients in these plant foods. Or keto diet books emphasizing heavily the negative health consequences of carbohydrates without ever critically discussing potential negative health effects of fats or at least certain fats. That's not science. It's similar to that metaphor of blind man, or here in this picture, blindfolded people describing an elephant. Depending on what part of the elephant they are exposed to, they describe it as a rope, a wall, a snake, or a tube. Most complex things just cannot be described adequately by just considering one portion or one aspect of it. Even if you define that portion accurately, Overall, you may still be totally wrong if you are not considering the entirety of what is known. This very thing happens a lot in communication about nutrition, in diet and nutrition books, but also here on the internet. So a few years ago, I had lunch with Dr. Stefan Guiné. We talked about these exact issues that plague diet and nutrition books. He shared that he had been impressed by reference checks of nutrition books conducted by another colleague, Seth Yoder. Seth had simply taken a few nutrition books and check the accuracy of all of the references. That's obviously a you know, boatload of work, but it turned out to be worth it because the results were sobering. We decided to contact Seth and ask him to work with us to expand on his idea, and Red Pen Reviews was born. We developed a standardized review process to score each book across three categories. The first category is scientific accuracy, which assesses whether current scientific evidence supports a book's key claims. The second category is reference accuracy. Here we assess how accurately the references in the book support specific statements made. And the third category is healthfulness, 
which assesses whether following a book's dietary advice is likely to improve or harm the reader's health. You can download the entire standardized review process and scoring key from the Red Pen Reviews website, here under Our Process. So I'm not going to bore you to tears with all of the technicalities. Red Pen Reviews is still a very young organization, and so far we have managed to review 13 nutrition books. Most recently we published a review of The Carnivore Code by Paul Saladino, and prior to that Walter Willett's Eat, Drink and Be Healthy and Mark Hyman's Eat Fat, Get Thin. Other completed reviews include Dale Bredesen's The End of Alzheimer's, Peter Dadamo's book Eat Right for Your Type, uh, Eat to Beat Disease by William Lee, The Obesity Code by Jason Fung, uh, The China Study by Colin Campbell, The Plant Paradox by Stephen Gundry, uh, The Good Gut by Justin and Erica Sonnenberg, The Longevity Diet by Walter Longo, The Bulletproof Diet by Dave Asprey, and Grain Brain by David Perlmutter. Currently we have reviews underway for nine more books, most of which we hope to publish this year. As I said in my welcome video last week, I left academic research and started Nourished by Science because I see the huge potential for people to prevent or even reverse chronic disease by using scientific evidence about the impact of different foods on our health. I also see the potential harm that can be done by the huge avalanche of misinformation or half-truths that we are all exposed to in this ever more complex world. I'm hoping I can do my part to help people sort fact from fiction, partially with my new website and this YouTube channel here, and partly through my work with Red Pen Reviews, which is why I wanted to introduce you to Red Pen Reviews in this video today. Ideally, sign up for our email list so that you will be notified whenever a new book review is published. That's it for today's video. If you're interested in all things nutrition and health and value a balanced perspective based on the totality of the scientific evidence, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Also, feel free to hop over to our website at nourishedbyscience.com where you can sign up for our newsletter or find us on Twitter or Facebook. Links to our website and social media pages are in the description below. Thank you again for hanging out with me a little bit today and I hope to see you again on this channel next week. Cheers. Mm -hmm.